Hey everyone. In this video, we're going to walk through a complete Vetric B Carve project. Here, we'll focus on 2.5D design and toolpath workflows, meaning we'll incorporate pockets, inlay, and profile cutting operations, which for many are the go to's as you create more complex, interesting, and efficiently produced projects. For this project, I'm using a 3 quarter inch slab of maple, and I've defined my work area as being 12 by 8 inches. I'll start with the base of the house using the draw rectangle command. And I'm adding the quarter inch fills from the start rather than later, but that's purely preference. There's a separate and eminently useful fillet command that we'll use later too. I'd like to center what will be the base of my house and the center of my material. I'll use the alignment tools command to center it horizontally and leave its vertical position alone for now. Time to put a roof on my house. Using the draw polygon command, I'll create a triangle and roughly place it. Now I can edit the triangle and precisely resize it in proportion to the house and the general roof line I want and roughly place it. I'll make sure the alignment is spot on by using the alignment tools command just as I did for the base of the house. Okay, in a somewhat vague sense, that's my house. I'll use the vector trim command to clean up the interior vectors, leaving me with only the combined silhouette. Chimneys are required here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, and I'm so proficient with the draw command, it is absolutely no bother adding it to my house here. And I'll remove the excess vectors using the trim command. There we go. For the inside corners, such as where the base meets the roof, we have a choice to fill it or not. Vetric will automatically affect an inside fillet based on the tool you choose. But if you're like me, you might prefer to just draw it as the machine will cut it. The rest are just preference. And that's the house. I think I'll probably put a border around it, but that's the basic shape I'm looking for. I followed the exact same workflow, combining primitive shapes such as circles, triangles, and rectangles to create the key fobs themselves. But rather than watch that, let's focus on how we use these shapes to define the female inlay pockets and the key fobs themselves which we can think of as the male inlays in this case. My next step is to decide where the pockets for the fobs will go. I've already placed a shape so that the fobs will extend below the house. Now I just need to establish the spacing between them. For this I'll eyeball it and use the group command to combine them and use the alignment tool to center the pair on my key holder. I'll leave these here and use copy and paste to create a copy of the pair. This copy will become the male side of the inlays that is, the key fobs themselves. I want these to be cut out at the same time as the key holder. I'll ungroup and move them separately to flank the key holder on either side. And to be tidy, I'll again use the alignment tool to line them up vertically. May as well be symmetric, right? Clearly, I won't need the key ring features on the female pockets in my key holder, though I wouldn't mind extending the pockets a bit below the holder to ensure I get a really good finish on those edges. With my line drawn, I can again trim the excess vectors and better define the pockets. I'm a bit concerned the key fobs will be hard to remove, so I've drawn a rectangle across their body that we can use as a recessed pocket for better access. With the design complete, I'll set up the cam operations that'll tell my benchtop standard CNC machine how to produce it. Starting with the drill operation, I only have two features to drill, one for each of the key fobs, that will accept a typical key ring. I'll give it a meaningful name and hit calculate. For the key fobs, I'd like these to rest just a bit proud when installed, so I'll need to make them quite a bit thinner than the house. I'll do this by using a pocketing operation to remove the excess material. Next, I'll use the inlay tool to create the key fobs, which we're thinking of here as male inlays. For the male side, this isn't really any different than using a profile operation. For this operation, the primary parameter is the cut depth, which we want to set to make sure we cut all the way through our material. And I'll select the quarter inch tool that I plan to use for this entire program. Now I'll create the receiving pockets for the key fobs in the holder itself. Again, using the inlay tool, I'll select the female option. And select the two profiles. I'll set the pocket cut depth to be just a bit less than the key fobs themselves. 
leaving them just a bit proud, which I think will help with removal and give this project more of a 3D effect. As this and the mail toolpath operation are currently configured, our fobs would essentially be a very tight press fit. So I'll adjust the pocket allowance field to tell Vetric that I'd like this to be a looser fit. Negative values will increase the outline of this pocket so that our parts can fit snugly but be easy to remove. If you are painting or using water-based finish, you may need to adjust this value even further to get the right fit. Now let's get a bit clever. I'd like a trim border around the house, and rather than draw it in, we can use the same pocket allowance field to get a similar effect with less effort. From the pocket operation, I'll select the house profile and put a positive number equal to the desired trim thickness in my pocket allowance field. This will have the effect of leaving a border around the house. Nice. Next, I'll create the fob removal pockets. I'll make the depth a quarter inch, roughly two thirds of the depth of the key fob pockets, which should work great. And finally, I'll create the 2D profile operation to cut out the house from the material. I'll use double-sided tape to secure the material, so I'll not need tabs to retain the house. I only need to ensure that I have sufficient tape under that part of the material to keep the house and fob secure. With my design and cam program complete, I'll preview the program and make sure it looks correct. I prefer conservative feed rates when doing one-off projects, especially where the material is held with double-sided tape. With the tape, the part will tend to move slightly under higher cutting forces, and I like to get parts that require little to no finishing once they come off the machine. Since I'm using the same tool throughout my project, I can export the G-code for all my operations as one program to my USB drive, which I can take to my CNC operator PC and run. I use my keyhole tool to make this holder easy to mount, and it's ready for action. Feel free to download this project from our website using the download sources button or the link in the description. We hope you liked this video. We spent a bit more time to make sure you see end to end what's involved in creating custom 2.5D projects in Vetric VCarve, and that even without importing complicated artwork, by just using basic primitive shapes such as circles, squares, and polygons, you can create just about anything easily and quickly. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.